do that very thing right now. We will, yes. Well, what happened to John? I mean, He's got cancer. The chemo there, he did a chemo Monday and it just... It Backed up and he puts uh, too much ammonia in his system. They drain like two gallons of fluid off of him in two days. And so it was... The, um, yeah, so yeah. the chemo really ran for a loop this time. Okie dokie! And Landon, I don't know if you've called all those out yet. But Landon Baker? Yes. He went to, they sent him to Scott and White because of his preemie. And they uh, tested him and they think that he might be blind. So they're going to start... Mm. Different kind of. Okay. What did he weigh at birth? He weighed one pound and six ounces at birth, and he's up to two eight. Wow. He's five weeks old, I think. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, well, we know that Hashem has everything mm -hmm. going according to His plan, but. Um, Unless you unless you intervene, unless you ask and change model, change change the course of things, um, nothing changes. Okay, and this is a very good lesson that we we we'll, we'll we'll talk about this lesson right now. Until Nakshon got up to his nose in the Red Sea, it did not split. All right, mm -hmm. and you, you know, and 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 the same thing happened again in the Jordan River, until they got in the river, and we're going to find out there's a warning in this parsha that deals with that, that until they did something, because we live in the world of Asiya, the world of action, mm -hmm. and, and because see there there, Adam caused the world of Asiya. There was no world of Asiya. There was only Yitzira, formation, mm -hmm. creation, you know. Um, there was only, only that existed. God formed and created. That's Berea and Yitzira. There was no Atzilut. I mean, there was no Asiya. Mm -hmm. That was, it was, it was there, but it was, it was hermetically sealed. It, it, it was, it was a part of the Malchut of Atzilut. Okay. That's where it existed. So, if you're part of the Malchut of Atzilut, you're Atzilut. There was no Asiya. So, once that catechismic implosion happened, it caused the world of action. It caused the world of doing. And the reason it caused the world of doing is because those worlds can't feel the periphery. See, it has no idea where its edge is. Because if you're everywhere, you're everything, how are you going to know where anything is unless you create an edge mm -hmm. of yourself? And so that was God's way of doing it anyway. Now, that's the whole thing about the Messianic era. God has no idea when it is. He has no idea how it's going to be and what is going to happen. Because if he did, it would be there. That's the secret of concealment and revealment. Mm -hmm. He has concealed it from himself. Because if he didn't, because if he didn't, if it was in his mind, it, it would, would be exist. revealed. Mm. Yeah, it would. Yeah. And how did he do that? He created us. We are the secret of the law of action that will cause whatever it is in the messianic era. We are what will cause when. We are what will cause how. We are what will cause why. We are, we are it. Same thing with this prayer. We are what will cause it. We are what brings its remembrance before the throne of heaven. 
We are what takes these people and lays them before the throne of heaven and says, Hey, Hashem, Metatron, you know, mm -hmm. there's a story that when, that when the temple on the ninth of Av, when the temples were destroyed, um, that the Holy One said he was going to cry. He said, I can't take it. Metatron comes to him and said, Holy One. He said, you go into your secret place and I will mourn for you. And so, and then, then we know that that whole Metatronic structure is the neural spinal nervous system of the Holy One. So, that's how he got, that's, he let the feeling be in the feeling. And he himself removed himself from it so that he wouldn't mourn. But there's an aspect of him that did, an outer aspect. What is the outer aspect of Metatron? Us. The angelic structure, which can only act when we act. That's the secret of stimulation from below. Makes them, when you do an act of Shabbat or union or sacrifice or mitzvah or anything here, they get to do it up there. And that's, that's how the whole thing works. God will not enter the heavenly Jerusalem until he first enters the earthly Jerusalem. It has to stimulate from down here. So, the, the model, the math, and we say this all the time, it never changes. The model of prayer never changes. You know, people may say, well, you know, we say the same prayers every single day. We're going to get into why. I'll get into why. This is why. Because the model doesn't change. Two plus two is four. Every day. And you've got to get to four. You'd have all day. You've got to get there. You can't do zero and three. You know, you can't change that. It doesn't work. So so when, when we say these people's names, what you have to understand, we have to, in our consciousness, when we're praying, and we say these people's names, we are literally, because Torah trumps everything, we're dedicating our Torah study for the sake of heaven to Hashem, and these people, as our Torah is laid before the throne of the Holy One, so are these people. So it's very important that we have a complete understanding of what we're doing in the world of action. Every word affects something. That's the whole thing about Lash and Hara, right? You know, so, because when we say something here, we murder something there, basically. That's the secret of the cities of refuge. We're going to find out. All right? So, as we get going here, just, just uh, understand the concept of prayer and what's going on in Jerusalem itself and, and, and I'm going to explain a lot of that today because because most of us don't understand the difference between Zion and Jerusalem. What is Zion? What are the Zionists? You know, what's what's this whole movement in the Middle East trying to kill the Zionists? Alright? So um, we'd like to thank God for his Torah. Blessed are you, Hashem our God, King of the universe, giver of the Torah. And uh, we would like to add that, that we would lay all these people before your throne, Hashem, and that you would uh, have mercy upon them with Rachamim. We would like to uh, dedicate our tour study to Debbie January, to John Culver, to Yehuda Hai Ben Matai Leah, to Sam Peak, to Rusty Gerhardt, to Greg Davis and his family, to Holly Harris and her family, to R.C. Upmore and her family and all the families affected in West, to Russell Kirk and his back, to Moore, Oklahoma, to Granbury, Texas, and all those families affected by the devastation there, to Landon Baker, to David Douglas, to Rosalind Bot Elise, and to Bob Beats, son of Joy Beats. And with that, we will say the prayer of 
the Ari, ruler of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God, the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and you enable us to take parts in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor, that it is the reason we plead before you, you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and that they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be, uh, may it be your will before you, God, a God of our, the God of our fathers, uh, our God, the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you, and may you listen to our utterances and open our closed hearts to the hidden studies of your Torah, and may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as a aroma of sweet incense, and may you emanate to us light from the source of all of our soul to our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit enlighten the eyes in our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel. Open my eyes so that I will see the wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterances of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to uh, tell you about something that's crossed my mind mm -hmm. in the last few days. Mm -hmm. That I uh, it it par it's something I've seen on TV that hit me that parallels what we've been studying about uh, the coming of the Messiah being around 6,000 and it's, you know, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. And about the flip from the masculine to the feminine. Um, so many detective series now <laughs> have women that are powerful, they're out there hunting down the bad guys with their guns, they do all this karate, they fight these big strong men and knock them out. And then comes on a commercial with a man sitting on the couch talking about doing the laundry. It just it just hit me. It's like a, a foretelling, uh, getting ready, a, a, a very slow movement mm -hmm. that we're seeing in the media mm -hmm. in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, it started in the 60s with the women's movement, you know, equal rights for equal pay for equal jobs, the li women's liberation movement, the women's lib. That's when it started. And why? What happened in 1967? The Seven Day War in Israel. That's when, that's when the end generation started. And so when the end generation starts, that's when the Guvarot increase. Now, Guvarot has to increase because the Guru Road energy is what makes the flip. Okay. So, and Guru Road energy, not mitigated, makes war and war and violence and war and this and that and the other. And it also, uh, you, you see it also within the feminine aspect itself. And that's the secret of the energy that the Holy One's going to use to make the flip. That is the very thing. And so, it's by no that you, you can say that and say look at Egypt and what's going on in Egypt and if you're looking at it spiritually it's the same thing it wears two different garments but it's the same thing and with that we'll get into what we where, where we need to get to today now up here on my chart of many things <laughs> I have drawn a, a sine wave, if you remember, you know, from... From your electronics class? From a, your electronics class. <laughs> and your, you know, from, from your electrical class and your yeah. physics class and, and all those classes you took uh, prior to coming to this one. Yeah. Now, now, but we do know that in, in Kabbalah, in the oral tradition, there is a thing called the Tsimtsum, right? The expansion and contraction. The expansion and contraction is none other than a wavelength. That's all it is. Now we, we, we know a wavelength 
has the wavelength itself, the amplitude, is this is called the amplitude, and I think there's probably a name for this, but we're going to call it the wavelength. Now, each one of these amplitudes and wavelengths is considered, an, an, like we would call in this class, an iteration. It's one movement from, it don't matter where you start, start at the bottom, you go up, you go down, you go back to the bottom. Okay? Now, when it's going down, constriction, you wrote. When it goes up, Hasidim. Now, there's one point we need to know. This is like every Parsha. See what I'm saying? Every wavelength is also a Parsha. Every wavelength is an iteration. It's a, it, it can be a generation. It can be however God wants to do it. But that's every time he makes a wavelength, there is growth. And it's going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Because he's never going to stop growing. Here's the deal. If you're on the bottom of this wavelength, you're in tohu. If you're on the top of this wavelength, you are in tikkun. When you say bottom, you mean underneath? Under, underneath the line. So anywhere here is tikkun. Anywhere here would be tohu. Hey, James, come on in. Um, in other words, you're on that side of the eversion or the inversion. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. So, what what the children of Israel what the children of Israel are are on a quest of is they are, as you know, throughout this class, they have been going through the tohu because it has prolapsed out. They've everything fell from the tikkun part to this part. So the top part would be the world come. And the bottom part would be this world here. As it's going. Because everything is happening now. The whole Adamic fall is happening now. Everything is happening this moment. So, what these children of Israel in the desert are doing, they are on mission impossible. And what we must understand is the, 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 the grumblings and the things that they did in the desert were not done by them even the air of raw it wasn't done by them it was done and this is this has got to get this concept it was done by the place they were at spiritually or physically yes both it was done the place caused it you know because the spirituality of that coordinate of that place caused the effects. They were, they were on a mission there. They all knew what their mission was. But the place actually caused it. If you are in Hot Springs, Arkansas, guess what you will get to do? Springs. Be in a hot spring. <laughs> if you are in the place of evil speech, right? If you are in the place of uh, death, if you are in the place of murder, if you are in... You get the picture? Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. There has never been a generation of people in this world like these people. Ever. And there never will be again. At the resurrection, they are resurrected first. So, we will go through this. Now, 
I know if you read this portion, you probably went, oh my gosh. <laughs> now, something very specific about this portion. Masse. This means the journeys. All right. Bear sheet is the beginning of God speaking. Correct? Mm -hmm. The letter bet has a numerical value of two. I can erase this now. This is the only place on the board I can write. And we're going to use our alphabet. Finally running out. Yeah. That is two. This Parsha Masse starts with a mim, which is 40. 42. Now, to use the words of my rabbi, it's everybody knows. <laughs> that the 42 name of God, it's well known, that's how he says it, it's well known that the 42 name of God was the name God used in the creation of the world. That specific name. Okay? So, it is those spe that specific name, names of, that got caught in the clipper. So guess how many places they had to stop? 42. 42 places. That's why it keeps going on. And they went to here, then they went to here, then they went to here. If you go through the account, it's 42. All right? And they were on a mission to burn out the clipper and clean up every single coordinate of God's name. What a better, cooler honor. All right. Now, if you look in, if if you look right here, and and in the first part of the part it says these are the journeys of the children of Israel who went forth from the land of Egypt according to their legions. Now, anytime we hear legions, we know we're talking above and below. Mm -hmm. Legions are even angelic. Okay? Under the hand of Moses and Aaron. These are the children of Jacob. Now, Jacob's children. So, why does it say these these are the journeys and then who went forth? Well, we know they went forth. Because it kept saying, and God said, go forth. It's listed twice here. Once as going forth. Once as journeys. Because to God... From his point of view, it's a journey. For their point of view, it was going to, going to the next spot. See? Now, if, if you know anything about the sporadic structure and about the lines that connect all these, sometimes the lines go up and down, but then sometimes you know they connect on a diagonal. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And how many lines connect these 10? 22. 22. Because there's 22 letters of the Aleph bet. Mm -hmm. So you may go here, but then you may go here, then you may go here. You see how sometimes they went forward, and then they went back over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then they had to go back here. Mm -hmm. They were tracing every coordinate of the body of Adam as, as they moved till they went through Every single lineal coordinate on the sporadic tree. Do you, do you think that if you mapped out their movement, you would map out the sporadic structure? Uh, I'm pretty certain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a... Thing. I'm pretty certain. So, um... And that's why it's hidden. It's called wandering the desert. Yeah, they, 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 they were on a precise mission. Matter of fact, one of these words in here... Dokkov and verse 12 means exactly specific. It was their journeys were exactly specific.
specific to what they had to do. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now. And they knew what they were doing. Did oh, yeah, understand? yeah, sure, 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 sure. Now, in all, there were 42 encampments. The first 14 of which were before the mission of the spies at Rithma, which is another word for uh, uh, Kadesh, which we're going to find out. And the last eight encampments were in the 40th year after Aaron's death. Thus, during the 38 intervening years, there were 22 journeys. See what they were doing? All right. Now, because well, now when they took that journey, we had the 14 because we had to go clean up the 14 mm-hmm. and fall down the tohu. Mm-hmm. You know, then we had specifically eight. You know, the whole yesod thing. Then we had the 22. So mm-hmm. they had 22. So they were not only mapping out the whole sporadic backside of Adam 22 that that gotten thrown in there, but they was also cleaning up all the all those particular spots of the tohu. Wasn't they following the the pillar of fire though? Mm-hmm. And the pillar of fire was actually mapping it out. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, or you know, Shahina, whatever that yes. is representing. So it was mapping it out, and they were following because when it moved, they moved. When it moved, they moved. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. They were building the part suf. They were reconstructing and building the part suf. Only then could the light fill it. Alright? Now, one thing you've got to understand about this class. This book is not a Jewish history book. Mm -hmm. The names and places listed here are only... Some of them are only listed here. Nowhere else in the Torah. Because some of them only existed where they were. And some of them are only going to exist in the next world. That they completed and built. We're going to find out that the, the, uh, the land of Israel, according to Joshua, is going to go all the way to Euphrates. But it doesn't say that here. It says uh, this just side of Jordan. Mm-hmm. So what we're, what we're going to see is, uh, is it a typo? One's this world, one's the world to come. See, I mean, it depends on where you're looking at it from. Mm-hmm. All right? Because before the fall, the entire earth was Israel. So, it's going to revert there. Now, you have Zion and you have uh, Israel. If if you're outside of Israel, you know, at that point it was was Zion. If you're inside the land of Israel, Jerusalem is Zion. If you're inside Jerusalem, the holies is Zion. If you're inside the holies, the holy of holies is Zion. See how that works? Depends on where you're at. That's the difference between Zion and Israel and Zion and Jerusalem. Zion is always going to be the center point you sowed of the whole thing. As we've learned in this class, there is not a place, town of Peniel. They can't find it on the map. There's not even the Canaanite place of Luz. We've studied that. Mm -hmm. How can they map it out? So what happens is you watch these shows on National Geographic and on the Discovery Channel and all this stuff, and they're trying to map out and go archaeologically dig where the children of Israel were and how they went all through the desert. And they hadn't found nothing. You know why? They were going up, not out. It is their ascent. It's the ascent that they were working on. They're a total different level. 
It is not a map to, from Egypt to Israel. That is not what this thing is. It's the consciousness of God. If you look at this thing and you're looking at it as the history book of the Jews, you have missed the point. You have missed the ball all the way. Strike three. Can you say it's a history book of the Jews? Absolutely. On the Peshat level, you bet. You know? But if you take it and you try to use it as a map for the for the Sinai Desert and for the Sea of Reeds and to try to find uh, Ramses Pharaoh and all those stuff, they ain't been able to find none of those people. So what happens? They say, oh, none of it ever happened. It's hokum. None of it ever happened. Because they can't find none of it. Well, when you're dealing on another level, no. The Leshem says that they were out to burn out each in each place that they were sent to burn out the Sitra Atra of each place, the evil inclination in each coordinate. That was their mission. All right? And it is the place that causes the fall. I mean... This would have been a scary mission. This is much worse than going back in the, and you know, going to being a CIA operative, going into Vietnam or going into Al Qaeda or whatever, trying to trying to get in under cloaked. You're because you're dealing with spiritual forces here. You're dealing with some stuff, and, and, and we're going to find out what God finally had to do to convince them they could go to the land of each, I mean, of Israel. Because they were convinced they couldn't win. They were convinced. Why? Because ten people told them it was a bad deal. Ten spies told them it was a bad deal. Ten's a minion. You know, the Word of God is, concerned, is confirmed by two people. Ten? Ten did it. And what he did is he literally took the angel that had dominion the, the Canaanite, Canaanite dominion threw him out down onto the ground in front of them and bound him in chains and showed him that angel, showed the children of Israel that angel and said, you'll have no problem defeating them for I have given them over to you. And only then did they go, well, alright. So they're on a spiritual journey. They saw things that you and I we'll never ever see in our lifetime probably. Alright? All of these names pretty much are bad names, you know, as, as we discussed. And that was the great challenge. The 42 name, the value of this, as we spoke, this was done by creation. 42 is the value of the Noga. It is the, it is the Noga, the, the Guvarot of the Noga. The 42 name is also the name of elevation. It's the name of resurrection. So, what were they doing at each one of these places? They were going in, cleaning up the 42 name that was contaminated with Klippa so they could elevate the neat so sparks of the holy name. Now when you say going in, are you talking about on a basic level into the Sinai? Or are you talking about going in? They to, went into the toad. Into the toad. Because that's what this the 42 name, the neat so of the 42 name were trapped there. But that, but so the Sinai Desert is still the desert represents Tohu. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Gotcha. gotcha. Absolutely. Now, very interesting. Glad you brought that up. Places where there's a heavy population and people can sustain life are places where Adam uh, didn't fall as hard. Mm. Coordinates of him that didn't fall as hard. Places that 
are jungle, desert, mountain, you know, uninhabitable, are places his coordinates fell a bunch. <coughs> All right. And so, obviously, the Sinai Desert, you know, a scorpion can barely live there. So, it is way in the Tohu. All right. <coughs> so, um, they were building a vessel that could contain the light. That's exactly what they were doing. They were trying to build the, this whole vessel of Adam. They were trying to bring it from this side of the curve, as I showed you, to the other side of the curve. And what's the other side of the curve? It's going to be the land of Israel. That's going to be the completion of the body of Adam. That's why, in the end, it maps out the whole thing. It tells where all they went and all the things they cleaned up. And then, at the end of the Parsha, and it says, and here are the boundaries. Here's the body of Adam. And here's the boundaries. Okay? Um, there were six cities of refuge. Correct? There's 42 Levitical cities. The 42, 42 Levitical cities <coughs> follows the 42 name, the Membet, plus the six cities. The six cities of refuge. 42 plus the six cities is 48 plus the coel, the value, is 49. What do we know is 49? 49 is Metatron? Yes. They had just reconstructed Metatron. Oh, wow. That's what they did. The body of Adam The Ram Hall says that every journey is an aliyah, a sanctification of the holy name. From Yitzira to Yitzira, which is Israel. From Israel to the Temple Mount, which is Berea. And from the Temple Mount to the Holy of Holies to the Foundation Stone, which is Atzilut. We, we discussed before the fall there was no Asiya. The, the whole world was Israel and Israel was the whole world. And guess what? In the Messianic age, when the Messiah comes, the whole world is going to be Israel and Israel is going to be the whole world. Mm. They were elevating the Malchuts. So if as you know, Russell, in your class, all the Malchuts are connected together. Right. They were going through all of them. We they know were, anything, we know that. If you know anything, you know that. They were going through all of them, from the Malchuts to Jacob, from Jacob to Israel. Why does the Torah keep iterating and keep saying they came out of the land of Egypt? Over and over. And they came out of the land of Egypt. And they came out of the, We've been reading the came out of the land of Egypt for three inches of this Bible. But they got to say it again. Uh, they came out of land of Egypt. Came out of land of Egypt. Because we know that Netzach and Hod, which also is your soul, but Netzach and Hod is where that klipa attaches itself. Right? Because that's what's hanging out. Netzach and Hod of where? Of uh, Asiya. Well, and that's our photo of every level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Be, except for Azulu. Okay. All right. So, um, if we see here, it says, Who went forth from the land of Egypt, Egypt according to their legions, under the hand of Moses and Aaron? Because the Klepa, Netzach and Hod. Egypt, Netzach and Hod. And so, how do you. Uh, how do you fix the Netzach and Ho? Aaron and Moses. It, it doesn't just say Moses took them out. Moses and Aaron. Because it's Netzach and Ho. Okay. So it's very specific of what they're doing. Because Egypt is codenamed Klepa. Alright. Alright. 
Now, the final, the Yesod of Abba, we know this is Abba. The Yesod of Abba is what I'm going to call it, don't paraphrase me on this, metaphorically goes in for the keel. Nothing stands before Yesod Abba. Nothing. That light is it. All right? Now, it goes on to talk about, and Moses, uh, second verse, Moses wrote their going force according to their journeys at the bidding of Hashem. Now, I told you a while ago that we had Bet, which is two of Beersheet, Mem of Masse of this Parsha. The beginning and the final Mem, the end. This is the, that was the beginning of God speaking. This is the end of God speaking. 42. Because His 42 name has now been completed. The name He used to make creation. Because next Parsha and Moses spoke. Up until now it's been and God spoke to Moses, speak to the children of Israel saying. But now that it's completed, Moses speaks. So this is this is another aspect of this 42, of these places, of the name, of why bear sheet starts with a bet of two, and this one's a 40 and M, and all the things that go along with that. Because I was reading in the by here a while ago and I found something really cool. Mim is spelled M-E-M. -E so it has two Mims in the letter Mim, in the word Mim. One is open, one is closed. One, the open one is female, the other one is closed. It's got Hug, it's got Hasidim and Gubaro. So here we see the whole completion of the whole deal. Now, This was, Moses wrote this as he was directed. It, this is not written haphazardly. It is a decree from the heights of heaven. Every journey was an ascent, a, sanct, a kedusha, a sanctification of the holy name. It corresponded to the root above. This is the going forth. God called it a journey. They called it going forth. All right, and and so um, if you if you if you keep going in here, it talks about the going forth, and it says that um, he struck every firstborn. We know that's always the first of the klipa, right? And on their gods, Hashem inflicted them. What does that mean? On their gods. If he's going to attack the coordinates, he's going to have to come against the angelic forces that are over those coordinates. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So, not only was there war going below and destruction going on below, there was war going on above and destruction going on above. And Abba the right hand make no mistake <laughs> it has no problem <laughs> you know it, 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 it always is, is humorous that the many religions have this great fight between Satan and God like there would actually even be a chance that he could yeah, you know yeah. I, I mean I mean come on you know, so all of the names of these spots, we'll call them spots or coordinates, all these names and spots are codes. We, and the reason there's not a lot written about this is because we will not know what the meaning truly is. Well, we know some of it. You know, we know that some of it 
Haroth is the mouth of freedom. You know, Baal Zephon, Zephon's north, that's heavy Guvaro, a Baal, you know, things like that. Um, and so, but the, the, the true integral meaning of all these things, it's going to be so important when the Messiah comes, he's going to reveal it all. It's going to be one of the, one of the big topics of conversation to reveal everything because the border of Adam was reconstructed. The body was reconstructed. And, and once the man can be reconstructed, the body's reconstructed, then the whole tacoon thing can start happening. Israel can start doing mitzvahs. You can't do mitzvahs. Most of the mitzvahs only apply to the land of Israel. If you think about it, the biggest majority of them have to do with temple. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, Now, there's a, there's a huge, uh, uh, oh, oh this, is, this is good. So there are all codes. We will not know them between the, the full meaning until the Messiah comes. It is the tikkuns that will be explained. The purpose of it was so the land could have a da'at. They were trying to reconstruct the da'at of Adam, which is Eben Stia, Holy of Holies. That's the whole Temple Mount thing. That's the whole Ark of the Covenant thing. Because you don't have any consciousness without the ot, right? And so that's what they were bringing Adam back to life. He had been on life support system. He had been in a coma. Mm -hmm. They were bringing him back to life, literally. Mm -hmm. Piece by piece. They were cosmic surgeons. And that's what the journey in the desert was about. All right? There's a word called Sfi. It means a deer. And, you know, you see the Psalms as, as a deer pants by the brook. Mm -hmm. Okay? Deer, code name for deer, Jerusalem. What Psalm is that in that? 42. Is it, is it 42 or 45 or 42? It's probably 42. It is 42. Yeah, I think it's 42. Because it probably has to do with this. All right? That's Jerusalem. It's Israel. Why is it, why are they called a deer? Because a deer's skin, if you've ever been a deer hunter, a deer's skin is very pliable. It's very stretchy. You can pull it and, you know, you a deer skin's like this, and then you nail it over here and stretch it, and you, you know, all of a sudden you got a big skin, big height, mm -hmm. right? And if you put some water on it a little bit, you can stretch it a little more, a little more. It's because Jerusalem is going to stretch over all of Israel, and all of Israel is going to stretch over the whole world. So it's they're called a deer, as a deer pants by the brook, mm -hmm. in the psalmist David wrote. Now. Um, one of the things that uh, Stacy <clears throat> said she the other night, you know, she was reading the Parsha here, and if you look in in uh, verse nine, and they journeyed from uh, uh, Mara, which is bitter, right? All right, mm -hmm. and arrived there at uh, Elim. Elim were twelve springs of water and seven date palms. Well, you don't have to be a Kabbalistic scientist to figure out what's going on there, but here's something that I want to go over because this is the class to do it in. Now, Moses, whose tikkun is the Malchut of Berea, which is Leah, because Leah had the Levites, right? And he's a Levite, right? So his tikkun is in the Malchut of Berea. You said that was Moses? Moshe, yeah. All right? Because he, that's, Nobody's ever made it up there any higher because what's what's that? That's the gone Eden. That's the gone, mm -hmm. right? But he wants to see God's face. Well, by this point, he's Zeron Peen, right? He is Zeron Peen at this point. He is, yeah, he's Zah. All right? I, believe me, when they saw Moses, they thought it was God. <laughs> Trust me. So, but Moses knows, you know, there's, there's still God. So he wants to see 
his face. So what does he tell him? You can see my back. Of course, we know that's the back of the head, the, the tefillin knot, right? He sh God showed him his tefillin knot. What is the back of the head? Leah. Remember we learned Leah and Rachel, all right? Be he could only show him what he was. So he shows him his coordinate. He shows him his tefillin knot. And he shows him the 13 attributes of mercy. Right? Well, this is, those are the, it's the, the head of a reek. And the head of a reek, the mohin, the brain, the light that comes out of that, extends down, we talk about light overlapping, to Zah. Right? Mm -hmm. He was Zah. So, there's, if you have 12, these are, these are the permutations of the name of God, yud heh vav -Hey, 3, 12. 3, yud heh vav -Hey, 12. 3, yud heh vav -Hey. These are the permeations of God's name, Havaya, from Teferet all the way down to Malchut. This is what connects it. 12 plus the value of 12, the Koel, 1 plus 1, is 13. So when you see, that's the whole 12 tribes, plus the Koel, 13. It's all back to the beard, back to the whole thing. This was the face of a reek, basically. But he had to do it in a manner that he could receive it. Because it was his coordinate. It was his spot. He couldn't have seen it from the front side because he'd have had to be of Abba. And there's no Klippa in Abba. Only Malchut of Berea. That's it. So, I want to explain that a little bit. And when you're dealing with the head of a Rikon Pim, this is the two-tailed Leviathan that we talk about. The head of a recon peen, the mochin of a recon peen, is that image that we've gone over that's the two-tailed Leviathan. And so that light goes on to Moses. So, so what's Moses? Moses is Leviathan. What's Leviathan? Da'at. Da'at of a recon peen, da'at of zeron peen, depends on what level you're on. To them, Moses was Leviathan. To Moses, a recon peen, I mean, yeah, a recon peen's Leviathan. To a recon peen, a, a tikio means Leviathan. To a tikio mean, it just goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up. We will never see that kind of a level, even in the world to come. Even when we're dead, we won't get that close. So, as you see, when they got here at Elim, they had 12 springs of water. You see why there's water? Why there's Hesed there? Because it's coming from the masculine side. Because of, and the 12 palm trees gives it away Kabbalistically. But I wanted to explain why the 12 palm trees gives it away Kabbalistically. And then seven, the lower seven spread, obviously the, the body. You know? So, you know, that was probably spa day. <laughs> you know? It's probably a pretty good day. So, um... <laughs> now, uh, cover a little bit about the seas of refuge. When I was reading this, and I told some of you in here earlier before class started, I was really pondering on seas of refuge, seas of refuge, seas of refuge... Why now? Why here? Why now? Because we have to go back to our map and our model of the fall. We always have Adam and Eve. We always have the other side of that. Mm -hmm. You know, the contaminated side of that. Mm -hmm. And we always have Cain and Abel. Well, what happened? Cain slew Abel. Murder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blood. 
If you read through all that, it's all about blood, blood, blood on the ground, blood, blood, blood on the ground. What's, what's the land? Blood on the land? Malchut. Mm -hmm. Can't have blood on Malchut. Because uh, the voice of the blood of your brother is crying out. Mm -hmm. All right? There's a term, Goel, Goel Hadav, which means the blood redeemer. <coughs> the higher root of the fall. Now, God puts six cities of refuge. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You sowed. Right? Because on the sixth day, you sowed. Seventh day, Malchut. So this is a you sowed point. Right? Mm -hmm. In and what it is, it's a hermetically sealed place in the body of Adam. What caused the whole... Uh, Adam sinned. Mm -hmm. The sin, sin is unintentionally missing the mark. Adam didn't mean for the Klippa to jump on him. Right? But because of that, it brought death. Death comes in many forms. One form is unintended. One form is murder, right? Mm -hmm. That showed itself with Cain and Abel. So, if you're building the body of Adam back, and you have to go in to the land of Israel and kill people. War, intentionally, un un unintentionally, right? There has to be uh, mercy, a, a, a place of, of of okayness. Because if not, if it's not mitigated, you can't defile the holy land with blood, the body of Adam with blood, with death. You're trying to make life, not death. You see. And so, here we have the whole Cain and Abel thing appearing right here, once again, in the body of Adam. Because, guess what? God sent the angel of death. Right? Mm -hmm. So he can't get caught in his own deal. Right? You, you see the conundrum he's in? If he sends the angel of death to take life, then you've got to... They've got an out as well. You, man has an out. He's got an out. As above, so below. So you can't say... You, and and because when it's not with mercy, it's like in, in Islam, when it's not with mercy, you kill somebody, boom, you're dead. You know? Because everything with Hashem is contained with Rachamim, with, with the attribute of mercy. You know? But because of the fall, death is going to exist. I was reading the deal. There's many reasons why Moses did not get to go into the land of Israel. But one of them was, there was going to be a lot of killing. He's a Levite. He can't have that blood on his hands. Of course, we know the Shekhinah and all the exile and all the stuff. He's over here taking care of his children. And which is there wrong? There's a there's probably 72 different reasons why Moses can't go in there. But Moses is Zah. What is the body of Adam when you rebuild Adam? He's it's Zah. Well, Moses can't be Zah if Zah's made. What does Zah need? What does Zeron it, well, it needs need? Nukva. It, needs it needs his nukva. Sure he does. So who gets to go into the land? Joshua. The nukva. He's the moon. Right. right? Moses is the sun. Zah. Joshua is the nukva. He's the moon. The children of Israel, nukva. So guess who gets to go in? The Malchut. Malchut. Yeah. Because 
He can't go in because if he goes in, he has to fall to Malchut. He has to fall to Nukva. That's opposite of what he just got through doing for 40 years. He was going up the whole time. Now he's got to go down. So, concealed, revealed. Internal, external. You know? So, that's a whole, that's a whole part of that deal. Um, let's see here. The first phase of their goings forth expresses how I went through that. Uh, let's see him. Yeah. Um, of course, we go through all these places. Then we come to this whole deal of the Canaanite here. Um, let's see what else I want to talk about in there. Very interesting. Uh, uh, the places uh, in, in 41 through 43, uh, they de detoured around the land of Edom. Because uh, they wouldn't uh, let the Jews enter, and and this was the, when all the poisonous snakes and all that stuff uh, happened in the copper serpent. Um, one of the places here, uh, the name in, in sixteen, um, in verse sixteen, thirty-one, sixteen, this uh, Kibroth Hatavya means the graves of craving. And the reason it's called that is that's where they crave the meat and the quail and all that stuff. And many died there. So um, uh, this, this rit, Ritma, another name for this place is Kaddish. And of course that's elevating the holy name, sanctifying the holy name. The opposite of that is Lashon Haran. This is where it happened. Lashon Haran. Um... Of course, they're giving us a stern warning here about driving out and possessing the land. Um, but that if you don't, they'll take you over. And, and of course, what are we having right now? They are arguing about the land and the settlements. It's mm -hmm. it's at it's at the peak of its it's 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 the, it's at the worst political state it's ever been since this time, right now. You know, it's the worst it's ever been. So, what? Well, yeah, we, they were interning the prisoners, you know, and all of that, so just so they can so they can get a chance to have a talk to where they can get uh, all their land took away and gave away from them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and give away the and, and give up the prisoner the people has been killing them. Yeah, it's and it, it's in a it's in a bad situation. If, if you look in 35, 15, it says that these cities of refuge are for the children of Israel, the proselyte, and the resident. Mm -hmm. It extends to the whole. It extends to us. In other words, <clears throat> there's going to be the Messiah is going to have more cities of refuge in the world to come. In other words, there's what it is is a cancellation of the whole thing. But when's it canceled? When the uh, you know it's all it was all tied to the Kohen Gadol. Because here's the problem. And um, let's say you commit murder and you have to go to jail. Well. To be without Torah is to be without life. So you're as good as dead if you're in jail without Torah. You're just as good as dead, right? So guess who was in charge of the cities of refuge? The Levites. That's So they still got their Torah, which is what brought them out of it. See how they were connected to it, you know? Um, I, I, I found some stuff here in uh, called Torah. We'll go through it just a second see if I can. There's some pretty neat stuff here. Oh, one of the things I was talking about. When I first read this Parsha, I was like, oh man. So and 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 so. And you know, back years ago, I'd have just skipped right over this one. And most people do. And the sages basically say, if 
you think or have the inclination that there's nothing in it, you're a fool, basically. That in this is, you know, in, in the mundane portions of Torah is where the meat is. It's where the whole, if you think about it, everything we've been studying, this is where it all came together. They, 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 had, they had done it. They had put everything together. You know, they had, they had fixed the whole Cain and Abel issue. They had fixed the whole broken Nitzot issue. They had, boom, Malchut, Nukva, Union, boom, they're fixing to go in there. It's fixing to happen. You know, they have to, they have to drive out some inner klepa that's in the, in the, in, in the, in the brain, so to speak. Which, which they're going to do. But, still, um, let's see here. There's a couple things in here I found. Um, Oh, one, one thing um, uh, that, I don't know if y'all know this, but, uh, you know, the ninth of all, that was the shattering of the vessels, mm -hmm. the shattering of the vessels, the, the destruction of all the temples and stuff like that. Aaron died on the first of all. And so nine days, you know, eight days after that, the destruction of the temple. It's all tied together. So actually, for those in the inner circles, they mourn for nine days, starting from the first of all. There's a whole nine-day process. Then there's a ninth day mourning and a tenth day because we know the ninth sphero is connected to the tenth sphero, Yesod Malchut. All right. Um, Moses, um, Miriam died at died at this. Hot Zeroth. And uh, one thing that uh, one thing that happened was uh, Moses and Eleazar and excuse me, Eleazar were the only family members present at Aaron's death for the burial. Israelites suspected Moses of having killing Aaron, killing killed Aaron, and wanted to stone him. However, they were convinced that they had erred and made a great eulogy for Aaron. When Miriam died at Hot Zeroth, no one came to her burial, but only Aaron and Moses eulogized her. Moses ultimately told God, Woe is me. Of my entire family, I alone remain. Who will come to my funeral? Hashem then consoled Moses and told him that he himself would do the burial. When in fact Moses died on the seventh of Adar, an entire month of mourning was observed. This was followed by a three day preparation. And then on the tenth of Nisan, the Israelites crossed the Jordan. On the tenth, which is very apropos. Um, They came to a place called Dibon God, means the house of luck. It was a place where the cows were so fat and fed that the milk flowed out of abundance. It was a sign of the excellence of the land. It says, it says, uh, and when you cross the Jordan River, he's talking about, and when you cross the Jordan River and enter the land, the Israelites were threatened with drowning. He told them they would drown if they did not take the warning of the serious impact of not driving out all the inhabitants. So, in other words, he said, if it's if it's not in your heart to co complete this deal when you go over there, you'll drown in the Jordan before you get there. So, they all had to say, yeah, we'll we're going to do it. No, we, 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 we'll think about doing it when we get over there. No, they had to say, we're going to do it. 
The Kohanim who carried the ark stood in the middle of the Jordan until everything that Hashem commanded Joshua to say to the people was finished and according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. The giving over of the land to the Israelites was intended to show all mankind the omnipotent power of Hashem, which he will do once again. And it was to show, to carry out his plan despite the strength of the 70 nations and the 31 pagan kings. Now we know there's 32 paths, right? The 22 letters and the 10 stroke. But they don't have one. There are only 31 pagan kings, not 32. <coughs> what are they missing? Probably you sowed. The other side doesn't have you sowed. Yeah, because it, it can't create. No, it can't create. That's probably correct. Uh, let me see here. What else do we have? Oh, Teresa, I saw this and thought of you. For to you I have given the land as a possession, it says. The land of Israel is where Hashem wants to dwell among His people. In the Song of Songs, Solomon writes, O my dove, you are in the clefts of the rocks, in the covert of the cliff. Let me see your countenance and let me hear your voice, for your voice is as sweet and your countenance is comely. Zohar explains. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what are you thinking about Teresa with all that? Because she, because she teaches, she teaches the song of songs and the and the, and the, uh, and the deal. Because the word dove, if you see the word dove in the Psalms or Song of Songs, Solomon or David, the word dove is the Shekhinah. Yeah. The covert in the cliffs is the temple of Jerusalem. And uh, where he takes refuge and never wants to leave. So, but anyway, I was thinking of you in a, in a teaching constructive way. Because <laughs> you're going to come across that. You're going to come across the dove. You're going to come across the deer mm -hmm. in the song. So, the deer is quite often. So when I when I see those things in this stuff, I try to pull them out for you. But that um, she was talking about the other night when she was she read through the song. You know, it's just been a while since she read it, and she read it, and after all of this classes and this thinking, and was really oh yeah, it just it, brings it to life. Songs. Yeah, it brings yes. it to life. It's just oh uh, 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 amazing what it's what it's saying. Um. However, at the destruction uh, at the uh, at the destruction of the first temple, uh, the Shekinah kind of hung around. But at the destruction of the second temple, the earth was totally contaminated, and it was an exile. Pagan kings ruled, and the voice of prophecy was silent. Uh, oh, here here's some stuff there. Right? And and um, in verse uh, in forty in verse thirty four, Hashem spoke to Moses saying, "Command the children of Israel and say to them, when you come to the land of Cana, this is the land that shall fall to you as an inheritance, the land of the of the Canaan according to its borders." Now, um, this is pretty cool. This is the land. Moses was shown the land before him, before it, to this point. He was shown it. But he showed it to him again. He saw, that, he saw it twice. So what did he see? What did he see twice? First he saw the land of Israel as it is, Tohu. But then he showed him the land of Israel, the world to come. The tikkun. Mm -hmm. So he showed it to him twice. So that's why it says, this, remember this and these? Mm -hmm. This is the land. So because he couldn't go in, he showed him from that point the whole thing. 
This is the deal. You know? So did he get did he get to see everything in Israel? You bet. And he got to see a whole lot more than anybody else. So Moses got to see. He didn't get to enter, but he got to see it all. They didn't get to see it all. All right. That shall that shall fall to you. The expression shall fall, as I was telling you all ago, explains of the episode of the spies. At at and the, the people, because there was more than two witnesses, there was ten. They did not want to go do it. At this, Hashem threw the guardian angel of the Canaanite people down to earth, bound him, and delivered him to Moses as evidence that the people's fear of the Canaanites was groundless, had no merit. Thus, the symbolic falling of the guardian angel is referred to right here in this sentence. According to its borders, it is necessary to explain the boundaries of the land since the land is where all the mitzvahs will apply, according to its borders. Um, now, it is taught, it, it says, uh, it, talk, it talks about the cities of refuge. It is taught that after all the troubles of Exodus and the 40 years in the wilderness, Moses was distressed. <laughs> um, but he was not on Prozac or Zoloft or any of those other things. He was distressed and not being able to share in the people's joy to enter the promised land. To console him, Hashem gave him a task of teaching the children of Israel about the mitzvahs related to the land. He charged him with five missions. Five, because five, you know. Here we go. Here we go with five. One, to conquer the land and seize it from the seven Canaanite nations. Two, to set its boundaries. Three, to divide it among the twelve tribes. Four, to designate the 42 Levitical cities. And five, to designate the six cities of refuge. In addition to them, you shall give them 42, uh, the 42 cities. <clears throat> and uh, these six cities of refuge are coordinates with six constants of mitzvahs. And this is, this is where you got to tie the place. Remember, it's the place that makes you do bad. It's the place that makes you do good. Right? So here are these six places. One, to believe in Hashem. Two, to deny existence of a foreign god. Three, to proclaim Hashem's unity. Four, to love Him. Five, to fear Him. Six, to not be led astray of our thoughts and our hearts or the sights of our eyes. These are the six spiritual mitzvahs of refuge. These six cities of refuge with the six words, there are six words in the first verse of the Shema. The 42 additional cities correspond to the 42 worlds in the passage, and you shall love the God, you're a God with all your heart, and all that. The concept of these cities of refuge, or places of where you keep yourself from getting contaminated, the concept for forgiving and protecting accidentally, possibly negligent murder, is consistent with Hashem's quality for mercy. In this, demonstrating the quality at the dawn of creation that he refrained from destroying man from the first sin. Because we know King David's words noted that Adam had been warned that the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Yet when Adam sinned, he did not die, but was expelled from the garden and lived another 930 years. His death sentence was commuted to be banished from paradise to, to live in exile. That act of clemency gave men an example of mercy to live by for all time. And that uh, is the deal on the seas of refuge. That's the deal about if you're there, you must be dead. Um, I believe that's all I've got. Of course, remember uh, when he goes in there and attacks Og, 
they finally get rid of Og and everything that remains over there. Um, and it had to do with the families of the children of Joseph. So, so where, where did they get rid of Og at? Where's it, where you well, well, they got rid of Og, but on their journeys, you know, they got oh, rid of Og. Oh, so out in the, in, the, in the wilderness of Sinai, yeah, yeah, they, they, that's when they finally get rid of Og. They finally got rid so of Og. he doesn't all, cross the Jordan. All the snow. And he doesn't, and Og doesn't cross the Jordan. So the question is, is where did Og not be? He's not in the land of Israel. He's not in Israel. And it's, and the the secret to the land of Israel is the mitzvahs. All right, they had to go out to the coordinates to burn everything out so they could go do the mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. The mitzvahs is what does the tikkun. The mitzvahs is what picks up the nitzot so. Mm -hmm. Every time you do a mitzvah, you're picking up a piece of the falling shards of the shattering of the vessels. So that's why they had to go through all the land of Edom, all the Canaanite kings, that whole kit and caboodle. And so now they they're they're right at the edge and they're and they're fixing to enter. And so next week we will do Devarim. Mm -hmm. And there's gonna be some really cool stuff in it, I'm gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that 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 was a very difficult one. Uh, but I, I think we pulled some pretty cool stuff out of it. Yeah, so much for a thirty minute class, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> so much so much for a thirty minute class. Yeah, we went an iron thirty. <laughs> well, you know, you get on the tour, you you gotta tell it. You gotta tell it all. All right, well Torah's amazing and the sages are amazing and we will see y'all next week. Bye. Yes, sir.